I hear the term gender confusion spoken a lot. Confusion is an appropriate term because you, you can change your mind, you can choose to, you can make choices about your identification and you can undo those choices. You can change it back. You can do anything you want to do and yet everyone must accommodate you each way you turn. Exactly. Gender fluid is a term that's used. It's not even considered changing your mind. This is just how you identify. Uh, there are an increasing number of people who don't identify with any gender. NPR Radio a couple of years ago did interviews and they said the kids that are on the cutting edge of this, that, that are really trending on this, they don't even want to be identified by any gender. They said, we met high school kids who said, call me tractor. So the sky becomes the limit. I can be multi-gender, I can be ambigender, I can, I can be a gender blender where we throw everything into a blender and mix it together. These are terms that they use. And, and I'm supposed to now look at this and say, okay, however you identify, that's reality. So in New York City, for example, you could be fined up to $250,000. If, if an employee comes in that was Joe, says, I want to be identified as Jane now, if you don't call Joe Jane and give accommodations to Jane, you could be fined up to $250,000. You say, well, can I at least have some medical verification that you're, you've undergone sex change surgery or you're under counseling and hormone therapy? No, it's illegal to ask for it. So it's, it's a complete Pandora's box of, of perception becomes reality. There's no way to quantify it, there's no way to measure it, and it turns society upside down. You're a student of the scriptures, you're a student of history. What is, what's happened? We're not arguing these things in a vacuum here. Uh, the scripture says there's nothing new under the sun. What has happened to civilizations where uh, marriage in particular, but you know this kind of homosexual uh, acceptance initially and then celebration and then kind of forces, on, forces itself on the culture. What happens to those cultures? It's fascinating to see there is an anthropologist named J.D. Unwin who was very much on the secularist side of things and believing the typical liberal myths against the family, who I believe was an Oxford scholar but a, a respected scholar who decades ago, early in the 20th century, did a study of world civilizations from the earliest times, whatever he could recover, Sumerian, and Mesopotamian literature, and Egyptian, Chinese, whatever, ancient societies, Greco-Roman, etc., and found that only those that were based on committed monogamous heterosexual relationships thrived long time, long term, that, that ultimately when marriage was dissolved or marriage was threatened in different ways, it brought about dissolution in the society. When you declare war on gender, when you redefine marriage, these fundamental institutions, these fundamental realities now get threatened and it contributes to the dissolution of society. But let's, let's back this up because this is not in a vacuum. This is part of the sexual revolution of the 60s. Yes. It's been pointed out if you, if you fell asleep in 1960 and woke up in the year 2000, you find the divorce rates gone up twice, teen suicide up three times, reported violent crime up four times, prison population up five times, children born out of wedlock up six times, people living together out of wedlock up seven times. So Stonewall riots, 1969, that's the same year as Woodstock. This is the same fruit of the sexual revolution, the counterculture revolution. So we see the negative fruit in the larger society. Birth control pill introduced in 1960 and now there's sex for recreation and not procreation. Women could be a lot more free sexually. All these things just unfold. They even go back a few years earlier, 53, a Playboy magazine with Marilyn Monroe, 48, Kinsey study on the uh, male and female sexuality with all the perversions that I put in. So these seeds being planted, it explodes in the 60s. We see the negative fruit in the society as a whole. And this is part of that. And part of it also is no fault heterosexual divorce in the church. If, if not for us opening the doors through our own failures, then no one would be talking about redefining marriage if marriage had been more solid. So all of us together need to go to God in repentance, get our own acts cleaned up, and then we can stand and be salt and light. The Bible is not confused about gender. Uh, we know scripture right at the foundation says God created us male and female. Right. We know that God's ways are lasting ways. God's ways are ways of life. Mm -hmm. God's ways bring blessing. And the world will always hate us. Jesus promised that. Right. 2 Timothy 3.12, all who live godly lives in Messiah Jesus will suffer persecution. We expect that. But let it be persecution for the gospel, for the right not for our ignorance, not for our self-righteousness, not for our hypocrisy. Let it be for the gospel. Then we, we wear it as a badge of honor, and that'll help shake the society.